Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to remove unwanted characters from a text field in Microsoft Access with a custom filter function that we are going to write ourselves. Today's question comes from Tom in Buffalo, Wyoming, the other Buffalo. I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, so that's the other Buffalo. Tom says, I know that you can force users to enter only digits into a phone number field by setting up an input mask. However, we do a lot of copy and paste from emails and such. That doesn't work with an input mask. Is there any way we could allow the user to paste a phone number into the field and then just remove anything but the digits? Yes, Tom, of course we can do that. In fact, let's write our own custom filter function so that we could filter out anything but the characters that we want, the digits, for example. Now, this will be a developer video, so if you haven't watched my Intro to VBA class, go watch that now. All right, it's a free video. It's about 20 minutes long. Don't let VBA scare you. We only need to write about maybe six, seven lines of code to get this to work, okay? After that, watch my After Update video, because we have to put this code in the After Update event for whatever field we want to check. We'll need to know how to do four next loops, so go watch that video. We'll be creating our own custom function, so I got a video for that. And if you don't know what input masks are, you might want to go watch that one too. So go watch all these videos if you don't know what the stuff is, and then come on back. Okay, so what Tom is saying, if we put an input mask in here, all right, on the phone number field, for example, let's go with uh, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. Okay, that means you have to put in all 10 characters. Okay, and that should allow, right? If you come in here, you go 239, 555, once, whatever, whatever. Okay, we're good. But if we have an email we're copying from, all right, let's say we copy the phone number here. Come on back over here and try to paste it. Now, it won't paste it because those characters, the spaces even, the dash, the parentheses, are invalid for the input mask. So... What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the input mask. All right. And then we're going to allow the user to just paste in whatever they want. And we'll have our after update event fix it. Okay. So once this happens, paste, you hit tab, and then our function will fix that. So how do we go about doing that? Well, let's make ourselves a function. We need a global module first. So we're going to go create and then module. All right, there's my VB editor. Let me resize. It's just a hair. We're going to make this a public function. That way everybody can use it. Filter characters. I'm going to call this. It's going to take two parameters. In string as a string. And then characters to allow as a string as well. I spelled allow wrong, of course. Allow. And that's going to return a string value. So it's going to take two strings in. Right? One, two, and that's going to return a string value. The first thing we're going to send it is what's the string that the user typed in. So the phone number with the, with the funky characters in it, right? And then the characters to allow is going to be a string of characters that are allowed to be in the string. Everything else will get filtered off. Okay? So we're going to need some variables in here. So dim, let's call it out string as a string. X as a long, because we're going to have to loop. C as a string. That's the single character as we loop through the allowed characters. I'll explain all this in just a minute. And then we're going to call another one C position as a long. Okay? All right. First, set out string to nothing. Set it equal to an empty string. It means there's nothing in there. Now, we're going to loop through all the characters in the in string. So for X equals 1, 2, the length of in string. All right, and then next, so that's our loop. We're going to loop through this guy. So if that's 555-1212, five, 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 one, two, one, two, right, that's seven characters, for example. Okay, now for each one of those characters, we're going to check and see if it's in the characters to allow string. And we do that like this, C, which is our one character string, C equals mid in string comma X comma one. The mid function says, Go into this string at this position and give me one character. Okay? So if you're... Here, I'll put a string up here, for example. I'll put, um, I'll put 
716-555-1212. That was from Buffalo, New York. See, Buffalo. <laughs> All right, so X is going to start at 1, so give me the first character, right? C is the middle of in string, comma, 1, comma, 1, that guy. And then when it loops again, right, X will be 2, so it'll say, give me that. All right, give me the middle of this string, the second character, give me one of them. That's how mid works. I got another whole, another whole video on left, right, mid string. I'll put a link to that down below in the link section too. Okay, that's an easy one though. All right, so now that I've got that character, I got this character right here, for example. All right, I'm going to check now to see if it's in the character to allow string. So C position equals in string care to allow comma C. The in string function says, is this string inside that string? So if it's, a, if it's the letter M, this will return a zero. It doesn't exist. If it's the number six, it'll return a three. It's position three, and it always returns the first one. Okay, you with me so far? So we've, so we've got a character at a specific position, then we're checking to see if that character is inside the characters to allow string. Okay? So it returns a zero if it doesn't find it. So we're going to say if C position is not zero, right? Greater than and less than means not equal to. Okay? Okay, if it's not zero, then we're going to add that to our out string. Out string equals out string concatenate C. So take that C, put it on the end of our out string. Okay? Then our next, and then when we're all done, filter characters equals outstring, right? We make the name of our function equal to this variable. So what's going to happen? It's going to loop through, right? One to however many characters that is. Check to see if seven is in that allowed string. If it is, add it to the outstring, all right? And then loop next. Is there a one? Is that in this allowed character string? No, okay. Yes, it is. When we get to this hyphen, that's not allowed. So it just won't get added to the outstring. Okay, you with me? All right, now we just have to put this in the after update event for whatever field you want to check. So I'll save this, Control S, this will be my global module. I usually, I usually have a global module where I put all the little small functions that I got like this. You don't want a, you don't want a separate module for each one of these and you get tons of modules in your database. All right, let's go into here, right click, design view, phone number, event, after update. Oh, by the way, did everybody notice in your copies of Access, one of my moderators, Scott, mentioned this to me this morning. He's like, did anybody notice that the Access kind of changed colors over the last week? They must have pushed an update at Microsoft and everybody, this used to be white, now it's gray. I, I kind of like it. This changed a little bit too, this guy. See, it's a little bit different. Little tiny, teeny upgrades just to make me have to update all my videos. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, okay, dot, 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 after update. Okay, after the phone number gets updated, what are we going to say? Phone equals filter characters. What are we sending to it? Phone, that's a string, comma, what are the characters to allow? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay, those are all the characters we're going to allow. All right, save it. And now, come back out here. Let's whoop, come back out here. Let's close this. My mouse does some weird clicky things once in a while. Customer form. All right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make a change to this one. Just hit space bar. That's enough to trigger the after update. Hit tab. Boom. There you go. All right. So you can come out. Uh, where's my email? There's my email. Right. You can come out here if you got a phone number that's in this format, or whether it's like this. All right. No matter what you got, anything, you just take this. Come here. Copy it. Come back over here, paste it in, tab, and the filter characters does the work. See, copy, paste, and boom, gets rid of all those characters. Okay, you can do the same thing with your name fields if you want to, right? You can come back in here, let's say, right click, design view, uh, email addresses, for example, you might want to have a list of, of uh, characters that are not allowed in email addresses. I have a list of it somewhere. I had to look them up for my website when people try to type in email addresses, but let's just do a name real quick. Okay, so we'll go to after update event right here. Okay, and we'll go uh, first name equals filter characters. 
uh, first name. Don't put it inside of quotes. I almost put it inside of quotes. They'll actually send the word first name to it, comma, what characters are allowed in a name. All right, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. You might also want to allow uh, a single quote, a dash, a space. Don't forget your space. They might have, you know, like Jean-Luc. All right, any other characters you want to allow in the first name. Okay. And since we have option compare database on, it doesn't matter if you have upper or lower case here. They'll both be allowed. Okay, so if I come in here and save it and type in John Luke like that tab, it's good. But if I type in something like this, those numbers get filtered right out, which of course you want to be careful with names because if you get people, like I get customers from all over the world and some other languages have those funny characters that aren't, uh, you know, on the standard 26 key keyboard, you know, a little E with the umlaut over it or whatever it is. Okay, all right, we type in something like this and it just gets fixed to that. All right. Of course, filter characters is also found in my code vault. This is a benefit perk for gold members and up. I got tons and tons of different functions in my code vault. Lots and lots of stuff in here. One of the perks of becoming a member, signing up, becoming a gold member. There's all kinds of stuff in here, all right? Generic VBA. I got access specific VBA. I got ASP. I got all kinds of things in here. Even a little bit of Excel VBA. Not, not, not much, though. I haven't gotten into much Excel VBA. If you like programming and you want to learn more how to add VBA to your Access database, well, check out my developer lessons. I've got 37 of them now and counting. Lots and lots of stuff to learn. Specifically, Access Developer 3 covered a lot of what we did today. For example, our four next loops. We've got variables and dimming variables and stuff like that. All kinds of cool stuff. Access Developer 3. I'll put a link to it down below. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them. And if you want to learn more in the extended cut for the members, we'll go over global constants. In other words, instead of having these long strings of letters, numbers, and whatever other characters inside all of your code, we'll just make one thing called alphanum, which is like alphanumerics, or just digits, which is 0 through 9. And you just put the word digits in there. And we'll do an optional replace with parameter. As you can see right here is a space. All right, for example, if you get an address and there's a bunch of weird characters in there, it'll just replace them with a space. I had this problem with uh, some credit card software that I wrote, right? It was trying to pass it to the credit card processor, but because there was a weird character in the string, it kept throwing up an error. So once I filtered out anything but letters and numbers, it worked. So that's all covered in the extended cut for members. Silver members and up get access to all of the extended cut videos, all of them. There's like 250 some now. And gold members can download these databases and they get access to the code vault, which is where all the cool stuff like my filter characters function can be found. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, Plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me. And you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions. Access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject. And one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. 
YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.